Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. Nearly 15 years ago, in July 2008, DRDU has tested a 12 megawatt marine gas turbine engine. The engine was installed on a marine gas turbine test bed at Indian Navy facility in Vishakhapatnam. The engine has been tested for its potential of 12 megawatt at ISA SL35 degree condition which is the requirement of the Navy for propelling the SNF Rajput class of ships. The engine was developed using the core of Kaveri engine. GTRE has added a low pressure compressor and turbine as a gas generator and designed a free power turbine to generate shaft power for maritime application. The engine has been named as Kaveri Marine Gas Turbine or KMGT. Now the irony is that even after 15 years of demonstrating the marine engine capability, India has not been able to field its production ready marine engine which could power the Indian Navy warships. The government back then did not show confidence on Kaveri's marine engine and preferred to go with completely imported engine from General Electric and Zoya Mashproet. Currently, most of the Indian Navy's warship uses the marine gas turbine engine from Ukraine's Zoya as their primary source of propulsion. These warships include Viri-class missile corvettes, surviving Rajput-class destroyers, Delhi-class destroyers, Talwar-class frigates, and newly commissioned Vishakhapatnam-class destroyers. Four more Talwar class frigates of Russian design, which are under construction at shipyards in Russia and Goa, also uses engine from Zoya facility. To power all these warships, Indian Navy needs more than 130 marine gas turbine engines and few spare turbine engines. Besides, Navy is going to face problem in overhauling or regular maintenance of these engines. Usually, a gas turbine is overhauled after running close to 30,000 hours. Now, apart from Ukrainian engine, Indian Navy heavily relies on General Electric LM2500 marine gas turbine engines. The engine is integrated with indigenous aircraft carrier INS Vikrant, three Shivali class frigates, seven stealth frigates being built under Project 17A. Therefore, the Kaveri marine engine is going to be extremely crucial for Indian Navy as it is planned to build nearly 200 warships indigenously. At the same time, the Russia-Ukraine war has again brought back the attention on indigenous engine development. On 13th March 2022, the Russian military attacked Zoya Mashprovate gas turbine complex in southern Ukraine, the same complex which supplies the marine engine to Indian Navy. While the 12 megawatt Kaveri marine engine may not be sufficient to power bigger warships, it can still power small vessels with displacement of up to 2500 tons. As per few reports, the 12 megawatt Kaveri marine engine is expected to be ready by 2023. DIDO is also planning to develop a more powerful marine engine based on 110 to 120 kilonewton class engine which is being developed for AMCA program. So it's the right time that Ministry of Defense and Indian Navy should start investing on building a more powerful engine to power even the bigger warships. Recently, the German engine maker MTU has refused to provide its propulsion for Chinese submarine, which it's building for Thailand and Pakistan. Therefore, it is important that India should accelerate the development of marine gas turbine engine to decouple the dependency from foreign OEMs. As per the recent statement given by Navy Chief Admiral R. Harikumar to the Hindu, the Navy had got a sanction for design and development of a diesel engine for maritime purposes and it was expected to be ready in four years. Now this is very good news. Navy is working on making the gas turbine generators and subsequently the gas turbines. So as per Navy Chief, we don't make diesel engines of the requisite or the requirement 
which is for the maritime specifications we have been making it earlier but it was done under license now we have taken up the case for making a diesel engine for requisite capacity designed and developed in india that has already been sanctioned and we hope it will materialize in about four years the navy chief has earlier pledged that navy would be completely self-reliant by the year 2047 the ship construction consists of three parts and in these parts the current status of indigenization is 95 percent for hull construction 65 percent for engines and propulsion and 55 percent for weapons and sensors this was today's update please let us know your views on this in comment section if you like the video do not forget to like share and subscribe with this i would like to say goodbye and jai hind We'll soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in the defense sector.